good morning. Amen. So, sa mga na-bless po sa ating umaga, pwede ba natin bigyan ng palakpak ang ating Panginoon? Amen. Good morning to everyone. And I believe we heard the news po na nangyari sa Resorts World. So, nabalitaan po natin yan for a couple of days. Last Friday, it's really saddening for what had happened there. And uh, we're continually praying for the victims. 37 po ang namatay po sa Resorts World. And nakakalungkot po yung balita na yun. May mga nangyayari po dito sa Manila. May mga nangyayari po sa Marawi, all over the nation. Kaya po, as one church, this is really the best time to put it everything into God's hands. Because in God's hands, He is in full control of everything. Amen po ba dun? Amen and amen. And before we proceed, let us just bow our heads and let us pray sa mga victims po na nangyari dun sa Resorts World tragedy, sa mga nangyayari po sa Pilipinas. And may we thank God for His protection for our church dahil hindi po tayo na-biktima doon. We're so much blessed and privileged na nakikita pa rin tayo dito every Sunday. And Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this wonderful morning. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for your wonderful presence, Lord God, in our midst. And Lord God, we just lift you up, Lord God, what's happening, Lord God, in our city, Lord God, sa nangyari, Lord God, last Friday sa Resorts World. Lord God, uh, let your love, Lord God, be felt by their families. Let your hope, your peace and joy, Lord God, be received, Lord God, from what had happened, Lord God. I know, Lord God, it's a sad happening, Lord God, a sad moment, Lord God, but may they see the light in it. And Lord God, may they know you more, Lord God, in the midst, Lord God, of these trials, Lord God, in their lives. And Lord God, we ask, Lord God, for your protection, Lord God, for our city. We ask for your protection, Lord God, for our country. Lord God, so much is going on, Lord God, but we have faith, Lord God, that you have a purpose for everything that's happening, Lord God, in this place, Lord God. And we just want you to continually move, Lord God, in our midst. And Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for protecting this church. Thank you, Lord God, for protecting, Lord God, each member, each family of this church. And Lord God, we're so much blessed, Lord God, that we are still seeing each other, Lord God, today. That's why, Lord God, we don't want to waste any moment, Lord God, not living life to the fullest of your greater glory. And Lord God, we commit the rest of this service to you. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Let's give God our highest clap offering. Amen and Amen. So today... Are you excited to hear God's Word? Amen. I'm also excited to preach to you God's Word. And I thank God for His Word for us this June. So this is the first week of June. So this is already the sixth month of the year. So grabe po, no? sobrang bilis ng panahon. Magkakalahati na po yung taon. Later on, magugulat na lang tayo na Christmas na ulit. So we're very much privileged. Magkakasama pa rin tayo ng June. And you know what? For this month, God has given us, us a series I will be preaching on the book of Ruth. So, sino po dito ang familiar sa book of Ruth? So, may mga familiar po sa book of Ruth. Sa mga hindi po familiar, ako, first time ko po to preach about the book of Ruth. And that's what we're gonna talk about for the next days to come. Kaya pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, makikita tayo hanggang sa last Sunday of June. So, walang iwanan, ha? So, every Sunday of June, nakikita kita tayo because we're on a series we're in a series of Book of Ruth, and our title for today is Lean Into Transition. Lean Into Your Transition. So ano po ba itong mga transitions sa ating buhay? Sino po dito mga yung mga transitions in life? So siguro sa atin po lahat, for sure we experience these transitions in life. Siguro isang transition po is from being employed to unemployed. So sino po dito ay may mga work po ngayon? So most of us may mga work. So some of us, well, biglang nawala ng work. So this is a very hard transition for our lives. Pag na-experience po natin ito, medyo nahihirapan po tayo sa buhay. Or siguro, kung hindi po yun yung ating transition sa buhay, siguro po right now we're going through a changing of careers. Siguro po some of us are engineers. Suddenly, parang hindi na po tayo tinawag ni Lord to be an engineer. Gusto niya na po tayo sa business world. Tatayo tayo na sariling business. Or siguro po nasa business world tayo, suddenly tinawag naman tayo ni Lord into the ministry. Magpo full time or magpa pastor. So that transition is not easy. Or siguro po in a more personal case, siguro itong transition natin sa buhay, from most of your friends are single, and ngayon po, most of your friends are married already. So, sino po dito mga single pa din? So, ayaw magtaas ng kamay, nahihiya. So, hanggang ngayon, single pa rin. So, for this year, ang dami ng kinasal, dami na nating nag-abay na tayo. 
Simuntahan na po natin, invite po tayo sa mga wedding po nila. Pero until now, tayo pa rin ay single pa rin. So, minsan yung transition na yun, medyo nahihirapan po tayo doon. And fourth, siguro po, some of us have lost our parents. So, this transition, I, I saw my dad's transition dito nung namatay po ang aking lola, yung kanyang mommy. Alam niyo po, hindi po siya nakakope up agad. So, that transition was hard for him. And lastly, from standing through a concert to sitting through a concert. So, nung medyo kasing idaran niyo po uh, ako, mga 25 years old, kaya po natin tumayo all day long sa concert. Pero yung medyo umidad-edad na kahit yung praise and worship lang. Hindi na po natin matapos, di ba? So, napapaupo na po kaagad tayo kasi nahihirapan na yung legs natin. So, yung mga transition po na yan, medyo hard po yung mga transition na yan. And sometimes, when we can't handle these transitions in our life, it becomes hopeless for us. Ano na po mangyayari sa atin? We don't see the hope in the middle of it. And you know what? There's this book, sa Book of Ruth nga po, there's this family whose name is Emilek, Elimelek, and their family was also in transition. So I would like to invite you, if you have your Bibles with you, you could open it with me in Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. And it says here, Now it came to pass, In the days when the judges ruled that there was famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, the name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon, Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Malon and Chilion also died. So the, women, so the woman survived her two sons and her husband. So this is the passage that we're going to talk about today. Pero para mas ma-visualize po natin, may nakita po akong magandang illustration sa, sa YouTube at gusto ko pong ipakita to sa inyo. So let's play the video, please. The Book of Ruth. It's a brilliant work of theological art, and it invites us to reflect on the question of how God is involved in the day-to-day -day joys and hardships of our lives. There are three main characters in the book. Naomi, the widow, Ruth the Moabite, and Boaz the Israelite farmer. And their story is told in four chapters that are beautifully designed. Let's just dive in and see how this all unfolds. Chapter one opens with this line, in the days when the judges ruled. And it reminds us of the very dark and difficult days from the book of Judges. And here we meet an Israelite family in Bethlehem, struggling to survive through a famine. And so in search of food, they move on to the land of Moab, Israel's ancient enemy. And there the father of the family dies, and the sons marry two Moabite women, Ruth and Orpah. And then the sons, they die too. And so they leave only Naomi and these new daughters-in-law. Like we bow down our heads and let us pray. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Lord God, we just ask for your wisdom, your anointing, and your favor, Lord God, to be upon us today. And we just want, Lord God, you to be the one to speak, Lord God, to our hearts and to our minds. And Lord God, we just invite your presence, Lord God, to move in our hearts and in our minds. And we just love to be in your presence, Lord God, today. Thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day. We love you so much, and we claim the victory, and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen and amen. Let's give God our very best clap offering. So, yan po ang pag-uusapan po natin ngayon. So, nakita po natin sa passage, nakita po natin sa video as the illustration. So, right now po, basically po yung story po, si Naomi po yung pinaka-wife uh, of Elimelech, of the head of the family. Pero ang namatay po doon is si Elimelech at saka po yung kanyang dalawang anak. Kaya po ang asawa ng kanyang dalawang anak ay natira na lang din po kay Naomi who is Orpa and Ruth. So who's remaining right now is Naomi, Orpa and Ruth. And it's just the three of them going through these transitions of their lives. At kapag sila po ay dumaan dito, how do we handle our life transitions? So isa ito pong pinagdadaanan ni Naomi right now, she is in a transition. And what should we do if we are in the situation of Naomi? And I believe we have our own uh, 
of our own design, our own version of transitions we're going through right now, tulad po sa mga pinag-usapan natin before we started. When we're in our transitions, how do, should we handle it well? So number one, how should we handle it? Number one is for us to recognize your transition. We need to recognize na, I, I'm going through a transition in my life. I'm going through my hardship. This is not an ordinary challenge. This is not an ordinary tra trial. I'm going through a transition in my life. And that is what Naomi recognized in verses 6 to 7. And it says here, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. So yes, she, she, she saw it. She recognized her transition. And in spite that she came from a devastating transition, namatay po yung kanyang asawa, namatay ang kanyang dalawang anak, sabi niya, I'm gonna get out from this transition. I'm gonna get out from what I'm going through right now. And what she, did she do? She arose. She took out. She got out. She st stood up. And what did she say? For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. So she told her daughters-in-law, tara, punta tayo doon sa Judah. Because there is hope there. God is there and they're giving bread. There's, there's provision there. And in verse 7, it says here, Therefore, she went out from the place where she was and her two daughters in law with her. And they brought on the way to return to the land of Judah. So Naomi, ayaw niya isave yung kanyang sarili lang. She wants to save her daughters-in-law, Orpa and Ruth, para po silang lahat po ay maligtas. And that's what she recognized Recognizing your transition makes you perform appropriately. Kapag na-recognize po natin, I, I'm going through a transition, this is a test in my life, this is a transition in my life, I need to perform appropriately when we recognize it. Just like po sa example ko po dito, just like in, on a highway, sino po dito ang mga nagda-drive? So may mga nagda-drive po dito, and on a highway, in a straight path, we could run mga 100 kilometers, 120 kilometers, 150 kilometers. So ako po, nung pauwi po ako from Baguio to Manila, sa T-Plex po, ako po ay naka top speed ng 180 kilometers. So wag niyo po gagayahin yun. May sinusundan lang po ako na mabilis, kaya hindi po ako nahuli ng mga official sudon. Pero yun po yung pinakamabilis na kinaya ng CRV Honda ko, 180 kilometers. On a straight path. So, kayang-kaya yon, Kasi dire-diretso lang everything. But you need to recognize when you're in a transition, kapag ikaw po ay nasa ka ganito ng daanan, on a curved path, hindi na natin kaya gawin yon. Tama po ba? Bakit? If we're gonna run here 180 kilometers, if we're gonna run here 100 kilometers per hour, nako po, tayo po ay madidiskrasya. So, if we don't recognize this transition from a straight path to a curved path, Tayo po ay tatalsik sa bangin at tayo po ay mamatay. And you know what? That's what happens as well in our lives. If we don't recognize the transition in our lives, hindi po tayo makaka-perform appropriately. Hindi po tayo makakakilos ng maayos at later on po, talagang nagiging hopeless yung ating buhay. So, na-recognize po ni Naomi ang kanyang transition and in verse 8 to 9, this is what happened. And Naomi said to her two daughters, Go! Return each to her mother's house. So this one's different. This one's shocking. Bakit? Pagdating na pagdating po nila sa Judah, when they arrive, they got out from their transition, they arrived in Bethlehem in Judah, ito po yung kanyang, kanilang sinabi, umuwi na kayo. Orpa and Naomi, go home already. So parang nakakagulat po. Parang pumunta po tayo from Manila to Baguio, six hours travel. At pagdating po natin doon, sabi doon, umuwi na kayo. Diba? Parang sobrang nakaka-discourage po yun. Bakit ako uuwi? And Naomi told this to Orpa and Ruth. Why? Because sabi niya, go back. There's nothing here. Wala pa lang hope dito. Wala pa lang provision dito. On second thought, wala akong kayang i-offer sa inyo. So sabi niya sa kay Orpa and Naomi, the, do the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. So Naomi was telling them, I give you the blessing to leave me. Yes, Naomi was hurting. Naomi was devastated of what happened. Naomi was uh, in a crucial situation. Pero sabi niya kay Orpa and Naomi, okay lang, iwanan niyo na ako. Save yourselves. I could live life on my own. And then the next verse, it says, The Lord grant you that you may find rest, 
each in the house of her husband. So she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. So here we could see that Naomi was very hopeless. Pumunta po sila sa Judah, they traveled for hours, maybe for days, at pagdating po nila yun, there is nothing. At alam niyo po, yan po ang ginagawa ng transitions sa ating buhay. Transitions make you hopeless. Bakit ano nga yung katabi mo? Are you hopeless? So baka ikaw ay hopeless, hopeless sa buhay, hopeless sa love life. Diba? So marami pagiging hopeless sa ating buhay. And you know what? Naomi recognized it. Yes, I'm going through a transition. Yes, this is a transition in my life. Pero nung nandun na po siya, she could do nothing with it. And that's what, uh, that's what transitions does to us. Transitions give you a good reason to quit. Yan ang ginagawa ng transition sa ating buhay. It gives you a very good reason to quit. So si Orpa and Ruth, they could quit. They could go home already. At sabi na, sige, Naomi, iwan ka na namin dito. And you know what? In my life, I'm also going through transitions when this year started. Naalala niyo po ba yun? Nung first Sunday of the year, I was telling you that I, ha- I was having these odd feelings in my life na parang I don't know what's in store for me for this year. I am uh, having these odd feelings na I don't know what's next for me. I don't know what's next for me tomorrow. I don't know what's next for me on the next week. I don't know what's next for me for the next months to come. I was in a transition. At hindi po po nagtapos yun for the couple of weeks ago, for a couple of months ago, I'm still experiencing the transition na hindi ko maintindihan why I'm having these odd feelings of having no passion in what I'm doing. Minsan nararamdaman niyo po ba yun? Na parang walang passion, walang drive in what you're doing while preparing the preaching, parang wala akong gana. Going to church, I, ha- I was having no drive. But ganon, I-, I really like what I'm doing, pero... There's no drive. There's no passion. And these odd feelings gives me a good re- reason to quit. A good reason, ang mga nasimula natin for one year, more than one year, almost two years na po tayong magkakasama dito. These transitions are giving me a good reason. Quit. Just quit everything you started. I- iwanan mo na yan. Okay lang yan because you're in a transition. Just quit. And sino pong dumadaan sa ganun ngayon? May dumadaan po ba sa mga ganun ngayon? We're going through trials, we're going through transitions. And when we're Naomi, when we're going through these tough times, what should we do? How should we handle our transitions in life? Number two is for us to lean into your transition. Lean into your transition. Uh, ang Tagalog ata ng lean is sumandal. So pakisandalan nga yung katabi mo ngayon para magising-gising. Baka tulog po yung katabi mo eh. So, please lean to your, to your seatmate. At ganito po kasi yung itsura ng pag Just like a motorcycle. Sa mga nakakapanood po ng mga motorcycle races, ganyan po pala sila mag They're almost leaning towards the ground. Bakit po? Kasi sabi po doon sa research ko, the, the, uh, kung, kung gusto mo po maka-make ng turn, the sharper the curve, the sharper the turn, sabi po nila, the more you need to lean para maka, makaalis ka doon sa curve na yun. And the faster you want to get out from that curve, the faster you want to get out from that transition, alam niyo po, sila po ay tumatakbo ng mga 100 kilometers per hour sa curve po na yan. Ganun po sila kabibilis. And the faster daw you want to get out from this curve, the more you need to lean. So the same goes with our transitions in life. The more na gusto natin makaalis sa transition na to, Kasi these transitions are giving us a hard time. Amen po ba dun? It's giving us a hard time. It's making us hopeless. And para daw po tayo makaalis sa curve na to, makaalis sa transition sa mga pinagdadaanan po natin sa buhay, the more we need to lean ourselves into this transition. So paano po ba yun? In verse 10 to 13, it says here, Then they said to her, Orpa and Ruth said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. So yan po ang commitment ni Orpa and Ruth kay Naomi. Naomi, ikaw ang aming mother-in-law, hindi hindi ka namin iiwan. So sino po dito sa may mga asawa? Sinabi yon sa kanilang mother-in-law, mahal ka namin, mother-in-law, hindi ka namin iiwan, hindi ka namin papabayaan. So yun po yung sinasabi ni, ni Orpa and uh, Ruth sa kanilang mother-in-law, we're gonna lean with you in this transition of your life. Hindi ka namin iiwan. But Naomi, their mother-in-law, 
was trying to uh, talk to them, talk to them into their senses. At sabi po ni Naomi, Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? So ito po kasi yung hinahanap. Ito po yung kailangan ni Ruth and, Na- and Orpa. Kailangan po nila ng husbands. Kasi po yung husbands po na yon, sila po yung magbibigay ng provision for Orpa and Ruth. So yan po yung kailangan nila ngayon. They need a husband. Kaya pakita nung nga yung katabi mo, kailangan mo ba ng asawa? So kung ikaw yung kailangan ng asawa, sabi mo, para sa yung message ngayon. Diba? So ito po kasi si Ruth at si Orpa, sila po ay naghahanap ng asawa to provide for them. Kaya lang po, ang sabi po sa verse 12, sabi na, turn back. Naomi is really discouraging them. Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say, I have hope. If I should say, to have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they have grown? So sinasabi po nila ni Naomi, ni Naomi o oh, sige, sabihin po natin na magkakaroon ako ng husband. Ngayon, aantayin mo pa ba siya pag siya ilumaki para iyo'y pakasalan? Diba? Parang it's, it makes no sense. Wala na talagang pag-asa dito. So sabi ni Naomi, Would you restrain yourselves from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. So Naomi is really making it clear for Orpa and uh, Ruth that Orpa could give them no husbands anymore. Meaning, kapag si, Orpa, kapag si Naomi ay wala ng husband na mabibigay kay Orpa and Ruth, there's no more provision, there's no more hope, and there's no more future with Naomi. There's no more all these things. These three things, sabi ni Naomi, kay Orpa, Ruth, I need to make it clear to you. I couldn't give you provision anymore. There's no more hope with me. There's no more future with me. What's the point of staying? At minsan po sa buhay po natin, ganito po yung pinagdadaanan natin sa buhay. This is what life shows us when we are in our transitions in our lives. Pinapakita sa atin that there's no more provision. Wala nang blessing dito. Wala ka ng pag-asa. Wala ka ng future. And when we're going through these tests, when life shows this up, will you still stay? Will you still lean into your transition. Sasamahan pa kaya nila ni Orpa and Ruth si, si, si Naomi. And true enough, medyo naliwanagan po si Orpa. At ano po nangyari? Orpa had quit. Yung isa pong daughter-in-law niya, si Orpa, siya po ay nag-quit. Iniwan niya na po si Naomi. She kissed goodbye, Naomi. Sige, Naomi, I understand. Ito pala yung aking pagdadaanan. Sige, iwan na kita. So, Pakisabi nga sa, pakitanong nga yung katabi mo, will you quit? So sino po dito mga magkikwit? Kasi po si Orpar po ay nag-quit na. Sabi niya, sige, ayoko na. Ayoko na ma-experience to. Hahanapin ko to sa ibang tao, hahanapin ko to sa ibang lugar. Pero sa mga nag-quit po, ito po yung hindi po nila nare-realize. That your transition is not forever. Amen po ba doon? Pwede ba natin palakpakan si Lord dyan? Your transition is not forever. Yes, what you're going through right now, it may be taking too long. What you're experiencing right now, you're having a hard time, you're having a bad day, you're having a... Hindi mo na maintindihan what's going on, there's no provision, no hope, no future. Pero for the quitters, ito po yung hindi natin nakikita, that your transition is not forever at may pag-asa ang ibibigay ang Panginoon para sa bawat isa. Amen po ba doon? Amen. Sige po, let's give God our very best clap offering again. So in verse 14, what happened there, then they lifted up their voices and wept again and Orpa kissed her mother-in-law. So umalis na nga po si Orpa, but Ruth clung to her. Ruth embraced Naomi at talagang she committed herself, I'm not gonna leave you. I'm gonna stay with you. So we could imagine it this way para po silang nasa isang motorcycle, magkaangkas po sila sa motorcycle and they're entering their transition, they're entering their curve 
And when Naomi turn, uh, leans into the right, kailangan si Ruth mag din into the right. Bakit? Kasi pag si Naomi ay nag into the right at si Ruth ay steady lang, sila po ay, they're not gonna make that turn. They're not gonna make that curve. They're not gonna make the transition. If Naomi leans into the right and Ruth leans into the left, wala rin po mangyari. They're gonna get into a crash. So kailangan po si Naomi and si Ruth, when they're riding that motorcycle, when they're riding into that transition of their lives, they need to lean together as one. And same goes sa mga problema po natin sa buhay. If we want to make the turn, we need to lean into it with all our hearts. Same goes with our marriage. Yes, we're going through tough times with our marriage. We're going through difficult times with our husbands, with our wives. Pero in that transition, it's not forever. Amen po ba dun? It's not forever and we need to lean to it as one, as a couple. And our church, praise God, wala naman po tayong masyadong big issues pa na nangyari, no big problems going on in our church. But when this church goes through its transition, may we stick with it to be one so we could make that transition. Especially what's going on in our country. Our country is in a difficult time. It's so easy na, hindi, alis na ako. I'm gonna quit this country, punta na ako abroad, punta na ako sa US, punta na ako sa Europe, I'm gonna leave this country. Pero if we really love this country, we're gonna stick with it. We're gonna stay with it so that this country could make it through its transition. Amen po ba dun? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And what happened, in verse 15 it says here, And she said, Look, Naomi is telling Ruth, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods, and after, run, return after your sister-in-law. Sabi niya, umuwi ka na. I'm discouraging you to go here. Just go back to, to, you, to where you came from. Go back to Moab. Go back to your own gods. Go back. And baka doon yung blessing. And sometimes sa ating buhay kasi, we have this call, what we call a fallout plan. Ano po ba tong fallout plan? Ang ating fallout plan is our plan my go-to place when everything fails. Diba? Kasi may plano ang Panginoon sa atin, may pinapagawa ang Panginoon para sa ating buhay, and if everything fails, if everything doesn't work out, sasabi natin, ay, may fallout plan naman ako eh. Dito ako pupunta, kapag sumablay ako doon, kapag hindi nag-work out dito sa Pilipinas, doon ako pupunta. We always have this fallout plan, lagi tayong may fallout plan, doon tayo pupunta when everything fails. Kaya lang minsan, Sa ating buhay po, minsan mas nafo-focus na tayo sa ating fallout plan kaysa sa plano ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. And because of that, lagi tayong may excuse, may pupuntahan naman ako eh. May babagsakan naman ako eh. Ano po nangyayari? Hindi na po dati nagagawa yung plano ng Panginoon talaga para sa ating buhay. And this is what, how do we handle our transitions in our lives? Ito po yung ginawa ni, ito po yung ginawa ni Ruth when he handled her transition, when he, she leaned into her transition, talagang nag-decide po siya from her heart that this decision is no turning back anymore. When I go with Naomi, when I go with her in her transition in life, there's no more turning back for me. At ito po yung sabi sa verse 16 to 17, could I call him the pianist here? So ano po ba tong decision ni Ruth of no turning back? Sabi dito, but Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. Sabi niya kay Naomi, Naomi, stop discouraging me. Stop discouraging me of going away from you, of leaving you. Hindi na, Naomi. I have decided to stick with you. yes. I have the option to leave you. I got the blessing to leave you and to quit and not to go through with you in these trials and testings of your life. But hindi, kasamahan kita dito. Hindi kita iiwanan. At anong decision po yun, sabi niya? For wherever you go, I will go. If God tells you to go to the left, I will go to the left. If I, God tells you to go to the right, go to the right. If God tells you to sell all your possessions, I'm going to sell all my possessions. Whatever God is telling you, that's what I'm going to do. Because I'm clinging on to you. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Grabe po, no? 
Kung sinabi ni Lord, matulog tayo sa kalsada, sa kalsada tayo matutulog. Kung walang pagkain yung pupuntahan natin, okay lang. Sasamahan kita, hindi kita iiwan. And your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. If, if God is telling you to die in the ministry, I'm gonna die in the ministry. If God is telling you you're, you're gonna die without a husband, I'm gonna die without a husband. Wherever you die, I will die and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. So, ito po yung puso ni Ruth. Kung bakit niya po yan ginagawa, kung ano po nakikita po niya dyan, in chapter 1, hindi ko po po alam. Sabay-sabay po natin matututunan yan in the next chapters to come. But this is the heart of Ruth. Na talagang, till death do us part. Yan ang commitment ni Ruth kay Naomi. Siguro, kay Ruth talaga nang ganan yung phrase niya, till death do us part. And that is her commitment to Naomi. I'm gonna be with you wherever you are. I'm not gonna leave you till death do us part. And in life, are we going through these transitions in our lives today? In these transitions na there's always a good reason to quit. Maybe God has a calling for your life and these transitions are so hard for you and telling you, quit ka na. Or in your marriage, Siyempre, iba-iba po yung tao, iba-iba po yung pinagdadaanan natin sa buhay. In our marriage, sabi niyo, no, wala na pag-asa yan. Ilang years na kayong magkakasama, just quit. In your family, hirap pakisamahan ng anak, hirap pakisamahan ng magulang. In these transitions in life, it's, life is telling you, just quit. And are you in this hopeless position? Sige, bukas na bukas, magka-quit na ako. Siguro ngayon, bago tayo pumunta dito sa church, yan ang nasa puso natin. On Monday, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna end it. And if you're that person, praise God that you're in God's house because the message is for you. And who here wants to get past their transition in life? Yan po ba dito? May mga gustong lumagpas sa kanilang pinagdadaanan ngayon. So this, the hands are here. They want to get past their transitions in life. You're in a transition today and God is speaking to you today. And may pwede tayong matutunan from this great commander. So, kilala niyo po ba yan si Alexander the Great? So he's a world conqueror, very good strategist, napakatalin ng tao. At there was one time na kalaban po nila yung mga Persian Empire. At they're almost losing. So malakas po yung army nila. They believe in themselves. They work hard, train hard, but they're in a transition of their lives. And they're in a verge of losing the battle. At ano po nangyari, nakita po ni Alexander the Great na yung kanyang mga tao tumatakbo to their own ships. Kasi sa likod po nila, pang-pang na po yun, beachfront na po yun, nandun po yung mga ships po nila, yung kanilang mga barko. At yung iba po sa kanilang mga tao, because they were so afraid, they were losing, Tumatakbo na po sila sa kanilang mga sariling barko. Kaya po, lalo po sila natatalo. So ano pong ginawa ni Alexander the Great? Ang sabi po niya sa, sa mga tao niya, sabi niya sa mga soldiers niya, this is what will happen. We go home in Persian ships or we die. We go home sa mga barko ng kalaban or we die. Kaya ano pong ginawa niya? Sinunog niya po yung kanyang mga sariling barko. All his ships, he burned it to the ground para wala, wala silang ibang option but to move forward. Just move forward. We need to win this battle if you want to go home. And true enough, when they burn their option, their other option, their fallout plan, ang bihira, sila po ay nanalo sa battle. And they were able to go home safely. They won the fight. They won the battles in life. And yan pong pangusap ng Panginoon sa atin ngayon, yes, you're in a transition. And you're, you have a purpose. There's a reason why you're going through this transition. 
And you're in a transition because God wants to let you grow. At nawa po, wag natin putakasan and lean into your transition today. Dahil para sa yan. And uh, I myself, right now on the sixth month of this year, regaining my strength, I mean, uh, I realize I'm really in the battle of saving the city. Are we in this battle of saving the city for the Lord? Are we in this battle of saving the city for the Lord? Amen. And sometimes there are other options that tempting me to get out from this calling, tempting me to quit this calling. What for? There's no provision there. There's no hope there, what you're looking for, what you're fighting for. Parang sobrang labo ng future. And it gives me a good reason to quit. But on the sixth month of this year, I'm telling God, telling you, I'm burning all my ships. I'm burning all my reasons for other options in my life. I'm gonna stick here. I'm gonna lean into this transition. Dahil ang Panginoon po ay may gagawin para sa ating buhay. May gagawin ang Panginoon in this city. May gagawin ang Panginoon in our country, in the Philippines. Hallelujah. And I would like to end here. There's this one person who leaned into his transition. When he was persecuted, nung pinahiya po siya sa lahat ng tao, nung siya po ay pinako sa cross, kilala na po natin itong tao na to, si Jesus Christ. And while he was being persecuted, while he was being hurt, while he was being dismayed, all the shame was put on him. He had all the options to save himself. He could tell God, Lord, save me and he will be saved. He could call thunder, lightning to strike all the people and they will all die and he will be saved. He could call all the animals to save him and he will be saved. But what did he do? He burned all his options to save himself. Just to save you and me. Just to save all the people here in this house, all the people in this city. He burned all his other options of saving himself because he loves you so much and he wants to save you. Kaya po, yan din po ang challenge ng Panginoon para sa ating yun as I call on the leaders of the church in preparing our communion. Kaya tayo may communion ngayon kasi may isang tao who leaned into his transition. Kaya the bread, the blood is a remembrance of the power of God in saving you and me in saving this church. That's why, if you're going through these transitions in life, we could remember, may mas grabe na pinagdaanan yung aking Panginoon compared sa pinagdadaanan ko ngayon. Kaya I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna fight and burn all my ships and finish the mission that God has for me. So right now, as we prepare the communion, we could bow down our heads, close our eyes, and as the worship team sings this song, you could make that decision today as you as we go into communion. There's power in this. You could make that commitment to the Lord today. Hallelujah. And today, we have all the reasons not to give. Transitions in life, financial uh, tragedies in our lives could give us a good reason to not give, to quit giving, to quit worshiping God. But we're not going to quit because someone gave his life for you and me. Someone paid the price for us to be saved, for us to live. And these tithes, God doesn't need it, but he's asking it from you. Because He wants to bless you. He wants to bless your family. He wants to bless our country. And our God, we lift up our tithes and offering to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for, for all these provision. Lord God, life, Lord God, will show us in front of us there's no provision in following you. There's no hope in following you. There's no future, Lord God, in giving ourselves in the ministry. But that's just temporary, Lord. It's not forever. 
We have something so much in store for us, something beyond our imaginations, something, Lord God, you're gonna, you've promised already to bless us and to favor us. And all we need to do is to claim it. And Lord God, we don't want money to be a hindrance, Lord God, in claiming that promise. That's why we lift up our tithes and offering to you. This money is not our God. It doesn't dictate our lives, Lord. It's you, Lord God, that we serve. And you're bigger, Lord God, in our lives. You're bigger than the universe. And you could provide all our needs. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this wonderful day. And Lord God, all that we're going through in this church for almost two years. Thank you, Lord God, for saving us. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us. Thank you, Lord God, for giving that welcoming spirit in this home, Lord. And Lord God, I know all the people who are here are called to be here. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for calling me, Lord God, to pastor this church. And Lord God, I don't want to quit, Lord God, from your calling. Lord God, life gives us these temptations to quit, to have these options to get out from your plan. But Lord God, your plan is the only plan for us. And we're going to pursue it no matter what. It's a till death do us part decision, Lord God. Because you have a plan for us. You have a plan for this church. You have a plan for every member that's in this church. You have a plan, Lord God, for every family that is in this church, Lord God. And these families, Lord God, will speak life to your people. This church will speak life to this city. This church, this church of God, will speak life to this nation. And it will make a difference. It may make a difference in our generation. And we will never be the same again. Because your name, Jesus Christ, is a name we proclaim. It's a name we lift up. That's why we lift up our hands. We give you our very best clap offering, Lord God, today. Because you are our God. And no one could stop us from serving you. No one could stop us from following you. And we're going to do this till our last breath. Thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day. And Lord God, we just give you back all the glory and all the praise in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless everyone. Have a blessed day of week ahead. Have a blessed week ahead. Hallelujah.